Fable is one of the most well-known and beloved franchises in the history of gaming, and the first Fable is one of my all-time favorite games. I've played it in as many different ways as one could possibly imagine. But for my first YouTube video, I'm going to try something I've never tried before. You see, the first weapon you receive in the entire game is not a sword, a bow, or magic. It's this stick. And this stick actually stays in your inventory throughout the game until you sell it. But instead of selling it, I'm going to find out if I can go through the entire game without using anything besides this stick. That means no magic, no bows, no other weapons, and no hiring help. Although help that the game gives you as part of a quest is obviously acceptable. Oh, and I'm also doing the entire thing naked because it's hilarious. The journey begins with me waking up from a bad dream, before being tasked with collecting enough gold coins from my father to buy my sister's birthday present, which is achieved by performing good deeds. I immediately go and perform an evil deed by hiding in a fair to retrieve my first gold piece, and then immediately reveal the affair in order to secure another gold piece, maximizing my profit like a true American. I then beat up a bully and return a little girl her teddy bear, which is enough good deeds to secure the goal I need in order to buy my sister a box of chocolates. I deliver the chocolates before watching my entire childhood burn down right before my eyes. I'm rescued by a man who will assuredly never betray me before Professor X tasks me with joining the X-Men. I head over to the training grounds, and it's there that I receive the ultimate weapon. After obliterating the world's strongest training dummy, I'm forced to use my epic new weapon to save the entirety of the X-Mansion from a massive swarm of bugs. After skipping the entirety of puberty, I return to the arena where Professor X decides I need a bit of a nerf in order to be able to train alongside Whisper. He gives me an iron longsword, and after beating her anyway, I put on my official work uniform before I'm forced to use two other weak forms of combat on training dummies before putting them away for good. After another time skip, I go and beat up Maze in the woods. After an incredible amount of confusion, I realize Maze was forcing me to apply the same debuff in order to become a true X-Man, and I am forced to wield a different weapon one last time. Hopefully this new seething desire for vengeance doesn't come back to bite him. After becoming a full-fledged superhero, I am given my first real quest to go slaughter more bugs, which I promptly accomplish without breaking a sweat. I then travel to Bowerstone for the first time, meet Maze, get a sweet haircut, and buy as many healing supplies as I possibly can. I then go on to my next quest, where I rob a farm, choosing to do so instead of protecting the farm in order to maximize my profits. I then fight Whisper once again, who stands no chance now that I am no longer nerfed by an average man's sword. My next task has me guiding traders through a dark forest. After rejecting to escort a man who is obviously going to turn into a werewolf, I use careful calculations in order to employ a tactful strategy in order to carefully guide our traders to safety through the packs of angry raccoons that inhabit the area. However, despite making it through safely to the final doorway, a massive troll blocks my way. It looks like fighting here will be unavoidable. Even though he is able to get me in a few obnoxious hit loops, he never deals much damage, and between some rolling, hitting, and healing, the fight ends with an easy victory. We make it to Barrow Fields before a return to the scene of the original crime, my hometown of Oakvale. After committing a few crimes for no particularly good reason, leveling up my character's strength stats, and flexing my wealth by bribing my way out of jail time, 
I head to the bandit camp to go kill the man who kidnapped my sister, Twinblade. I do struggle to sneak my way into the camp, but once I have accomplished the task, I once again employ a careful strategy in order to collect the bandit armor I will require to sneak into the camp. After sneaking into the camp, I remove the obnoxiously tight clothing and free some slaves to distract the last of the guards. Then comes our first, true boss fight of the playthrough. Twinblade himself. What proceeds is perhaps the most dull boss fight I could have imagined. You see, Twinblade has only a small handful of animations, and he has the attack speed of a drunk tortoise. Seriously, I don't need to roll or sprint, I can legitimately just walk around and not get hit. You can also only damage him from behind, and that opportunity arises when he gets his blade stuck in the ground following this attack animation. To top it off, when he does so, you can only get in two or three hits. So this loop of walking and hitting and walking and hitting goes on for quite a while, but Twinblade inevitably falls. I skip every cutscene with my sister before sparing Twinblade and my psyche from any more of this combat. I return to the X-Mansion and am tasked with saving an archaeologist from his boring career. We carefully and intelligently make our way past the enemies. before guessing the name of a talking door. H-I-T-S HITS! We find the archaeologist, run past a couple of angry raccoons, before continuing on to our newest town, Knothole Glade. I show up to Knothole Glade to find a pack of raccoons attacking the town, and thus begins one of the most epic battles I have ever had in the world of Albion. After saving the town, I walk up to the gate, only to realize... <laughs> you see, what you're supposed to do after the archaeologist is return to the X-Mansion, accept the next quest, and then move on to Knothole Glade. However, 
I chose to go straight to Knothole Glade and fight all of the raccoons in the area instead. Since I didn't accept the quest first, I did it all for nothing. At least I got a sick montage out of it, I guess. So I returned to the X Mansion, accept the quest, and returned for round two against the raccoons. After saving the town for a second time, I'm tasked with playing a cat and mouse game with the legendary albino raccoon, before chasing him into a corner and beginning the final epic confrontation between myself and the raccoon hordes which have plagued me through this section of the game. By maintaining a barrage of attacks on the albino raccoon, I'm able to keep him from performing his own attacks. Likewise, despite summoning other raccoons, they appear to be frozen in fear by the prospect of taking on the stick wielder who has already slaughtered most of their friends. After an endless barrage of attacks, the albino raccoon is slain, and Raccoon City, <coughs> I mean, not whole Glade, is finally safe. Next up on this journey is the first true challenge of this run. I have to travel to and win the arena. First things first, I go around and stock up on supplies, level up, and then head over for what, unbeknownst to me, is about to be a brutal test of my patience and willpower. After entering the arena, I buy all the supplies I can from the trader, wait my turn in line, and enter the Colosseum. Round one consists of wasps. They go down like flies. Round two consists of hobs, although more time consuming, once again, a simple task. Round three sees Whisper join the fight alongside me to face my mortal enemies, the raccoons. This one begins to test my patience. The raccoons take an eternity to bring down with the stick, and not only are these swarms numerous, but they also include two waves which has a total of three albino raccoons. Although I eventually win the round, my brain at this point is fried. Round 4 consists of the undead. The worst part about this round is the blocking. Undead block my attacks at a significantly higher rate than pretty much any enemy in the game. This takes a lot of time and flourishes, but they all eventually go down. Round 5 is where things go very, very wrong. Round 5 consists of bandits. I personally was surprised they didn't come up sooner, simply because they go down much easier than both raccoons and the undead. However, partway through this round, everything changes. That's right, I ran out of healing supplies. Up to this point in the game, they had been so plentiful that I had yet to use a resurrection file once, and yet I now had to use four just to survive this round. I take the opportunity following the round to forego maximum profit and re-enter the rest area. But to my horror, I discover that the trader does not restock between rounds, which means after buying his two resurrection files. I am left with just seven resurrection files to beat the remainder of the arena. And so, I re-enter. Round 6 consists of two trolls. Since I already knew the attack loop and exploit for this enemy, I'm able to survive the round without losing any of my resurrection files. However, round 7 consists of two stone trolls. I haven't actually fought one of these yet, and learning their move patterns ends up costing me almost three full resurrection files. However, after realizing their close attack could be rolled out of, 
I am able to exploit a role in attack loop that makes the fight fairly simple, although time consuming. Round 8 is the final round, which consists of a giant scorpion. I quickly learn the scorpion has an incredibly painful charge attack and snapping claws. It also charges a ground pound attack that sends a wave of damage after you, but it is during this charge and immediately afterwards that provides the opportunity for attack. It does cost me multiple resurrection files to learn this pattern, and the fight takes long enough that the opportunity for eventually getting hit is high. By the end of the fight, I have just two files left. And that's when the real final round begins. I'm forced to fight Whisper. Despite getting in close enough for hits, my attacks appear to either go right through her or get blocked. To my dismay, she is able to defeat me. But I'm not giving up yet. I reload the game to take it to her again. What? This is when I very painfully learned that in order to save in the arena, you have to exit and re-enter in between rounds. I begin to despair, not knowing how I was going to get past this, but, not being one to give up, I begin the cycle again. I boot up my game and check my supplies to see if there's anything I've picked up along the way that could help me, and it is here that I find the most unlikely of heroes. It turns out that in order to drink beer to heal, you need to actively equip it in your action slot. Therefore, I had yet to use the excessive quantity of beer I had acquired from vendors throughout the run. And it was this beautiful, delicious brew which would give me the advantage I needed. I re-enter the arena with a brewery's worth of beer at my disposal, and once again, defeat the trolls without losing a resurrection file. I exit and re-enter, and I'm actually able to repeat the success of the last round defeating the stone trolls without losing a file, albeit with significant drinking. I once again exit and re-enter. After another incredibly lengthy and tedious battle against the scorpion, filled with excessive drinking, I am able to defeat it, losing only one resurrection file. However, there is no opportunity to exit the arena before the whisper battle which means I will have to defeat her in order to avoid fighting the scorpion a third time, as well as the wilting away of my sanity. The fight begins with me dodging her attacks and looking for an opening. As I struggle to find a way to get a hit in, I notice something, something which could turn the tide of the battle in my favor. Whisper leaps away, and when she lands, I notice one of the traps activate. The traps which had previously turned off for the scorpion battle, had reactivated. I test out the floor trap and, to my great joy, I am easily able to bait Whisper into it. I move over to the blade trap in order to increase efficiency, and Whisper is easily kited into it continuously. After several minutes of Whisper mindlessly running into traps, I am able to defeat her and achieve my victory. But victory isn't enough. I wanted revenge. I continue the fight with Whisper, kite her into traps, and kill her, making up for killing me the first time. And with that, I beat the arena. My stick and my stubbornness have prevailed, and I can now continue my journey. I return to the X-Mansion where I level up and accept my next quest to meet my sister at the Grey House. However, I'm forced to fight a bunch of guards because I accidentally accepted a quest to do so earlier in the game, and the area outside the Grey House is where the quest is active. After killing the guards, I visit the Grey House, and I am tasked with once again saving the archaeologist. I proceed to the north of Bowerstone, where I very meticulously maneuver through the quest to reach the captive man. And this is where a new problem unfolds. 
In order to rescue the archaeologist, you need to kill all of the robot turkeys in five minutes. Although I don't struggle to eventually kill whatever enemy I need to, killing them quickly is another story. Part of the problem is that the robot turkeys block almost all of my standard attacks, meaning flourishing is the only way to cause continuous damage. I dramatically failed to do this many, many times. I try using the explosive barrels on the way, but it only makes things worse. I eventually settle on the strategy to lure them all to the end of the dock and begin using flourishes like a madman. Doing this, I eventually get it to the point where I have one turkey left to kill with a whole minute left. And to my absolute anguish, I somehow failed to kill the last turkey. But it did mean that it was possible. After almost two hours of repeating this over and over and over and over and over again, I take a deep breath, grab a coffee to regain some of my sanity, and continue on. My next quest sees me saving a bandit from execution. It goes simply enough. Afterwards, I'm tasked with breaking into a prison to save my mother. The journey begins with me opening a demon door in a graveyard by collecting a set of armor and returning them to a dead man's tomb, all while fighting off hordes of the undead. Such a task required well thought out, careful, and thoughtfully developed strategy. After entering the demon door, I use a summoning circle to open a door with the souls of the undead. Which, I mean, if they have souls, are they really dead? I mean, I guess they're undead, so they're alive, but they don't feel very alive or soulful. Uh, well, they're re-dead now anyway, so moving on. I'm forced to kill even more undead in order to open a few blocked off doorways before carefully sneaking in through the prison, undetected, and reaching my mother. This boss fight sucked. All you do is hit tentacles one by one after dodging them, one hit at a time, until they're all defeated. After that, you just hit this thing's head over and over again, while healing after it hits you with a laser. Repeat. It took like 30 minutes. It was horrible. But my mother is now free from prison and I can now return to the X-Mansion to level up and continue my journey. Little did I know, this challenge was about to hit its peak. Our next task involves opening a gate to Hook Coast by defeating enough undead to fuel it with their souls. However, I quickly learned something that is about to make my life much, much worse. You see, the bar actually loses charges as time goes on which means you have to quickly chain together kills in order to power the gate. And if there's one thing this stick isn't good at, it's chaining kills. Not to mention, after these first three smaller undead enemies are gone, they're replaced by the most powerful form of undead enemies. After carelessly and frustratingly having attack after attack blocked and not being able to defeat these things fast enough, I learned that my best method of attack would be to get behind one of them and quickly hit it in the back until it dies, while hoping that none of the other enemies would block me or knock me over and give that enemy enough time to turn around. This cycle went on for a very long time, but to my dismay, it was not possible for me to get the bar high enough to charge the portal. I reloaded the game and brainstormed. 
I was going to have to hit them faster and harder, which meant gaining levels, which meant gaining experience. Lots of experience. And so began one of the greatest war crimes in the history of Albion. After genociding Hobbes for several hours to achieve max physique and speed, I returned to the accursed portal, and with my newfound power, employed my strategy. As this went on, I noticed that I was indeed getting closer. I also began using the respawning of the undead to get behind them faster. This went on, and on, and on, for another very, very, very long time. But once again, it was impossible to get that bar all the way up. I was broken, defeated, hopeless. Despite the maximum stats and efficient killing loop, there was no way for me to complete this portal. After sitting in anguish for quite a while, I decided there was only one thing that I could do. I reloaded my game and returned to the X-Mansion, and scrolled over to the Magic tab, hoping to find something that could help me. I know I said at the outset of this video I wasn't going to use any magic, but magic in this game usually impacts either the player character, causes damage, or impacts the overall environment. But there had to be something I could do. And that's when I found it. You see, multi-strike may be magic, but by its own definition, the only thing it actually impacts is the weapon it's applied to. This means that, despite the use of magic, I am still exclusively using the stick, albeit a magically imbued stick. Deciding that bending the rules was my only way, I give in and purchase the spell. I continue genociding Hobbs in order to level up the multi-strike to level 5, and return once again to the portal which had so haunted me up to this point. I was annoyed to find out that Multi-Strike knocked down the skeletons, meaning I couldn't continuously hit one with a multi-hit. But that didn't matter. The hits were coming. A new surge of hope was flowing through me, and thus began one of the most intense, if not the most intense moment, of the entire run. Finally, after what accumulated to six hours of grinding, the Colas Gate opened. I stepped through victorious, ready to begin one final quest. After finding a blocked out gate, I return to the X-Mansion, where Maze shockingly betrays me. I receive my last quest from the Professor. I manifest my inner Ghostbuster while taking on Maze around the snowy coast. With my new multi-strike ability, and Maze no longer being able to nerf me with a longsword, he goes down quite easily. The game then updates itself with a red reshade mod before I begin an incredibly well-executed battle strategy in order to chase down Jack of Blades.
After a game of cat and mouse, I return to a destroyed X-Mansion and a wounded professor. He tasks me with taking down Jack once and for all. I enter the sanctuary and begin my last battle. I take down multiple robot turkeys before getting to swing at Jack himself. The fighting goes on a while, and then Jack ascends. A problem occurs. I cannot hit Jack from down here. I had come too far to lose now, though. It was then that I noticed something. Jack's sword attack causes enough splash damage to hurt himself when you stand underneath him. I exploited this by using all of the potions and food I had relentlessly bought up to this point, and I employed a meticulous skill and strategy. And that was it. I had done it. Jack was defeated, with only my stick in my hand. My sister offers me a new blade, but I choose to destroy it, maintaining my loyalty to the weapon which had gone through so much with me. Albion was saved by a naked man with a stick. And so, we ask, can you beat Fable using only a stick? Yes. Mostly. I did fully intend to do this run without any magic whatsoever, but it was not possible for me to open the Hook Coast Gate without imbuing the stick with multi-strike. Definitionally, I only use the stick, but the stick was also, in the end, buffed by magic. I still personally count this as a challenge succeeded after reading the definition of multi-strike, but I understand this might be controversial. What do you think? Do you think this proves the answer is yes? Or that the use of multi-strike tarnished the run? Do you think I could have opened the gate without it? Let me know in the comments. Either way, thank you for watching my first video, and I'll be looking forward to the next one.